We're planting Hippie Astrum today on Pots and Trowels, and that's brought to you with the support of King Seeds and Cobra Garden. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, today I'm going to plant this really lovely, large, plump hippie astrum bulb. But before that, just a reminder that all the Pots and Trials videos are on YouTube, where of course you can subscribe for free and watch the 250 plus videos that we've done over the last five years. And don't forget, we also now do our weekly podcast, also called Pots and Trials, that you can get from your normal provider. And if you've got any gardening questions, that's the place to send them to, to the podcast and we'll answer them on an upcoming episode. But back to this wonderful hippie astrum. Uh, of course it's bulb planting time, here we are now in autumn, we're planting bulbs out in the garden and we've got videos that we've covered in the past of all sorts of bulb planting in containers and in the garden. But this is a tender bulb that cannot be planted outside, this needs warmth. This is a, a bulb that originally the genus the Hippiastrum come from South America so they come from warmer climates often called Amaryllis and that's the common name for these but Amaryllis and Hippiastrum are actually both different genus of plants but that's how names sometimes get a mixed up so botanically this is a Hippiastrum and over the years there's been lots of breeding to produce some amazing hybrids hence the reason we get these really big healthy bulbs and they produce tall stems with trumpet flowers on in whites and pinks and reds and bicolors and they are absolutely amazing. So they flower through the winter and early spring and any time really from October through until Christmas you can pot these up and start them into growth. So we've got this healthy bulb here, this is one we got when we were at the uh, Harrogate Autumn Show a few weeks ago from Hearts Nurseries. And all we would do with this is, uh, this, it's in good condition, this is, it's a really healthy bulb. Sometimes, depending when they're lifted, they've got more living root, but this one, the roots have dried off a little bit, that's not a problem, they've just gone dormant. So I'm just going to trim those off. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't at the end of the day, but it just prevents any little rots in the compost. So just a tidy little trim to get our bulb ready for putting in the pot. Now, because this is going to be grown inside, obviously we need a plant pot and this is going to be quite a big plant pot. So the rule is we want a pot where when we position our bulb in it, we've got at least an inch of space around it like that. So an inch, two and a half centimetres uh, is sort of the, the what we're aiming for. What we don't want is a huge pot like a bucket where you've got this massive amount of compost. So that is more or less the perfect size pot in relation to this bulb. So when you get your bulb, just choose your pot. I'm going for a terracotta pot, but it can be plastic. What it does need is drainage. These uh, need good drainage, so we, we can't have a solid base in it. And to further improve that, what I'm going to do is just put in some little bits of old broken plant pot, which I keep, and just cover those over like that over the drainage hole at the base and that just stops the compost clogging it up uh, and causing waterlogged conditions. So that's the pot, that's the bulb. Um, if you're buying one by the way, make sure you get a really, really firm one. These are sold loose. You can buy them sometimes in presentation boxes from various shops and stores, which is how I used to buy them for my grandmother many, many years ago when I was a teenager. But I like it where you can actually handle the bulb and you can feel that that is a good, solid, firm bulb um, and is going to grow well. When it comes to the compost, they need a good rich compost. Um, so what I've done here is I've mixed my own, but you don't have to, you can buy just a bag of multi-purpose. But what I've done here is I've put two parts peat-free multi-purpose uh, in there, and then there is one part um, loam, so soil essentially, and one part grit, which gives us this nice um, sort of gritty, well-drained compost that will drain, but also retain the moisture. So that is what we're using. So we can get some of this compost and we're going to put some of this into the base of the hole. Now, when we're planting bulbs in the garden, the general rule is that we plant the bulb 
two to three times its depth. Now, obviously, with a bulb of this size, we'd need a, a digger to dig a hole, but we don't actually do that with them. With these hippiastrums, we plant them so that there's always at least half the bulb exposed. It can be a little bit more, but we're looking a minimum of half that bulb wants to be on the outside of the compost. This is pretty much where it would have grown when it was growing in the nursery. So we're going to try and get a similar sort of position. So I'm just going to hold that in and it just needs a little bit more compost. So this is where all the roots are going to grow down into it. And then position your bulb in. So the compost level will be just below the rim of the pot like that. So I think we just a tiny bit more. And then what we can do is then gradually now fill this in with the compost. And this is why you need this inch of space so that we can filter that compost because we want it to go underneath the bulb. We don't want big air locks. So it needs to make sure that it filters right the way around the bulb. So it surrounds the base like that. Now, of course, this bulb has got everything in it that we need. It's got the flower, it's got the stalk, it's got the leaves all waiting in there, just ready to burst out. And then what I'm going to do very, very lightly is just firm it down. I don't want to compress the compost. I just want to make sure it's actually in contact with the bulb. And then we can just get a tiny little bit more to level that off. Give it a good tap so it's firm in there like that. So that is it. It's as simple as that to pot your bulb. And then all we need to do, I'm going to put mine on a saucer because this is going to go into the house. And then we just need to give that a drink just to settle the compost and also just to moisten that compost. So that will then immediately, once it's somewhere warm, and that will drain down nicely through into the compost and right the way down into the pot. What that will do now is it will trigger this dormant bulb into growth. The roots at the base will burst into growth and they will fill this pot with a really strong, healthy root system. But then what will happen from the top here, where this is where all last year's foliage has been trimmed off and we can already see the start of a little green shoot in there. I don't know whether you can see that, Jill, that little green shoot. So it's already wanting to start and grow. As soon as it starts to make a bit of root, this will grow. Now, the tip is not to let this get too wet. They need moisture, but they don't want to be wet and soggy. That's the quickest way to rot the bulb. So I will almost let this dry out before I water it again. By then, it will have produced a nice shoot. And thereafter, I'm going to keep it just moist. So that's what I'm aiming for. Moist, but not uh, wet and soggy. It needs a bit of warmth, so although I'm potting this in the greenhouse, this is now going to be taken in and put on a, on a bright windowsill where we're going to maintain sort of 18 to 20 degrees through the day. It doesn't matter if it dips a little bit at night and that will grow. Secret is when you've got it on a windowsill, they sometimes tend to grow towards the light. So every two or three days, just twist that pot around so you get a nice straight stem. It's going to be a stout stem. We'll probably get two stems with a bulb of this size. And then in about six to eight weeks time, depending on the temperature, we'll get these beautiful big trumpet heads on it. Now, I got this, as I mentioned, at the Harrogate Autumn Flower Show back in the end of September. I can't remember which variety it is, so I have no idea what colour it is. So it's going to be a surprise for us when it flowers, but it will be stunning. Um, and you can keep these bulbs for years and years and years. People used to throw them away, but like any bulb, if once it's flowered, you let it die down and you feed it to build up the bulb again, then we can get it to flower next year. So still bags of time to get one from a garden store or a garden centre or nursery or bulb specialist. Get it potted and enjoy it. Probably a bit too late to get it for Christmas, but you're certainly going to be able to enjoy it uh, over the new year and into early spring. So get potted. <laughs>